I am Elko Pertrician. My uncle Earl Pertzai reported to the USS Indianapolis as a bugler second class in 1944. Very quickly, Earl made friends with another bugler, Glenn Morgan of Weatherford, Texas. Glenn was a pretty experienced musician. While aboard ship, they became good friends. Glenn took Earl under his wing and helped him learn the bugle calls. On March 31st, 1945, tragedy struck. A Japanese kamikaze crashed into the USS Indianapolis, ripping a hole into the ship, dropping a 500 pound bomb, and tearing through several decks before exiting and exploding underneath the ship's hull. Seaman Troy Nunley pulled Earl clear of the flooding. Unfortunately, my Uncle Earl died of his injuries a short time later. He was only 19 years old. Earl's good friend Glenn Morgan sounded taps when Earl's body was taken off the ship in a flag draped casket for burial on a nearby island. It has been 75 years since Earl's death. Meeting Indy survivors, men who knew my uncle, has affected my life in amazing ways. From reading the book, Only 317 Survived, I learned survivor Lyle Paskett resided near me. I contacted Lyle and we formed a lifelong bond which I cherish to this day. Going back to Glenn, he and I became such great friends that over the years, we would talk on the phone until one of our batteries would lose power. Becoming an honorary survivor was one of the most humbling experiences of my life. The ship and her story has impacted tens of thousands of lives. The kamikaze attack killed Earl and eight other sailors, leaving 21 wounded. Damage to the Indy was catastrophic. If not for their sacrifice, the USS Indianapolis may have finished out the war as the flagship of the Fifth Fleet returning home in victory. Instead, the Indy was repaired in California and quickly put back into service. The Navy needed a fast ship to complete the most highly classified mission of World War II, and the USS Indianapolis was called into action.